Okay, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so the topic of today is what happens when you uh, use text messaging with Facebook ads. So first, my name is Jason Gerdner. I'm the CEO of Tacobi. Um, I've been in the auto business for 16 years as of April of this year. All on the vendor side, everything I've done has been revolving around generation and BDC slash appointment setting. So at one time I had a room of 60, 70 reps that were on the phone. We were doing two or three million pieces of mail and we were setting appointments to go into car dealerships. We, I had a hard time moving into digital, just like all the other mail companies that were out there, they got scared of it. In 2008, I made the leap and I started a company called Social Ups. It was a gaming application that we put on car dealer pages where everyone was uh, concerned about fan generation and we did pretty well at driving fans to car dealer pages. Walker Toyota, I don't know if anyone's seen their Facebook page, they've got about 250,000 Facebook fans. That was from the gaming application that I developed. Realized that fans didn't sell cars. I mean, everyone in here has probably gone through, um, through this. You wanted a bunch of likes, fans, and realized it didn't sell too many cars. So I came up with a company called Spark. It was a sharing application that was meant to take a picture of customers at the time of delivery, share it with their friends and family, and then try and data capture on the friends and family of the customer. In February of last year, I sold that company to More and Scary Advertising, and I started a company called Tacobi. I almost gave up on selling cars on Facebook. I almost gave up. I built Tacobi originally for direct mail. One of my clients said, hey, I'm gonna give you a big budget for Facebook ads, and pushed me in this direction and I developed a software that connects with text messaging to Facebook. And this is where it completely changed my idea on selling cars on Facebook. So basically connecting Facebook with text messages is gonna not just make you happy, it's also going to make your customers happy. We live in a generation where everyone wants instant grat gratification. They want an instant answer to their questions. They don't want to wait 15, 20 minutes to get an answer. So today's talk, today we're going to be talking about education. You really don't know what you don't know. I'm, I'm sure everyone's heard that. But today we're actually going to talk about things you do know. What we do, what, what this is about is very simple. People are obsessed with one thing. It's not sex. Well, we kind of are. It's not wine. What are we obsessed with? Anyone know what we're obsessed with? Phone. With your phone. You're, you're, you're completely obsessed with your phone, and I'll, I'll point Dan Webb out. He's in the back of the room. So anyone who's his, his friend on Facebook, he recently, his phone broke, and it broke at about midnight. He woke up in the morning, realized his phone was not working, and we did a Facebook Live challenge, and so we were doing one live video a day. So his live video for that day was literally him crying that his phone was broken and that it took three hours for Apple to fix his phone. We are that obsessed, and I mean Dan's a scary looking guy, for him to get on Facebook Live and start crying is pretty obsessed. I mean, he's, he's extremely obsessed and all of us are obsessed with our phones at this point in time. So what you do know, oops, sorry, is we're obsessed with the phone. We all are obsessed with the phone. I, I mean, everyone in here, if you look around, your phone's sitting on your desk in front of you. So 46, what do you think that has to do with the phone? Does anyone want to guess what 46 has to do with a smartphone? How, number of what? That's a very good guess. I didn't think anyone would get that. The average American checks their smartphone 46 times a day. So 46 times a day, the average American is checking their, their smartphone. And this is actually a study done by Time Magazine. It's a fairly recent study done in December of last year. That's a lot of times to check your phone. We're business people in here, so we're probably on way above that. So the average person is going to check their phone about 46 times. And some of you may be thinking this is, this is only children. This is the younger generation that's checking their phone. That's incorrect. 25 to 34 checks their time on average 50 times a day. So that age group of 25 to 34 is checking their phone 50 times a day. What is the age that someone buys their first car? 
What is the typical age that someone's buying their first car? 18, 19. So at this point, they're on car number two. Are the, would, would it be fair to say that these are car buyers? 35 to 44, which I fit in that age group. I'm 39 years old. 35 times a day. I can tell you I probably check my phone 35 times an hour. It's, it's literally killing me that my phone is sitting over here and not in my hand. I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with my phone. Every, every form of communication, I'll be sitting on the couch, and Scarlett's my, uh, my lovely wife over there, I'll be sitting on the couch next to her, and instead of talking to her, I'll comment on her Facebook post. Anyone ever done that? Anyone ever been sitting next to their spouse and instead of talking to them, you're commenting on their Facebook post? We are constantly on our phone or texting. I've texted her before while I was sitting next to her. She's like, can't you just tell me? I'm sitting right here. So everyone pull out their phones. Everyone's probably already got them out. So let's get everyone to pull out their phones. And raise your hand if you have the Facebook app installed on your phone. So everyone, keep them up. Let's keep them up. If you have the Facebook app on your phone, keep them up. Hold on. How many of you have the Facebook app on your home screen? If you don't, put your hand down. If it's not on your home screen of your phone, the home screen, when you hit home, put your hand down. So most everyone in the room has the Facebook app on their home screen. So we're obsessed with our phone and we're obsessed with Facebook. Most of us, you can go ahead and put your hands down. <laughs> the next one, unread text messages. Raise your, pull out your phone, look at your text messages. Raise your hand if you have unread text messages on your phone, right now. So that's a few of you. And most everyone in here has their text messages read. And that's kind of a trick question because you have unopened text messages but you read every one of those text messages. <laughs> you read every one. You may not want the person to know that you read it, but you read the text message when it popped up on your, on your cell phone. 79. What do you, anyone want to guess what 79 has to do with a smartphone? I pick up your phone 79 times a day. No, that's not it. Average American checks their smartphone within 79% of Americans check their smartphone within 15 minutes of getting out of bed. Within 15 minutes. You may get up and go to the restroom, maybe make a cup of coffee, but within 15 minutes, you're checking your smartphone. What are you not doing? You're not watching TV, you're not reading the newspaper, you're not listening to the radio. You're checking your phone. You're checking your text messages. You're checking your Facebook app. You're checking all the notifications that are on your phone. This one's a little more interesting. 17. What do you think 17 has to do with a smartphone? And I'm guilty of this one. Americans that check their phone immediately upon waking up. So who's checked their phone? You're laying in bed which I know most of you probably use it as your alarm clock. You reach over, you grab your phone, you're checking it, and it falls on your face. Or it falls and hits the ground. It's the first thing you do when you get up. The very first thing you do when you get up is check your phone. 67% of people, this is another study done by GFK MRI, 67% of people, the first activity that they do is check their text messages. If you have an unread text message, you look at your app. If you're not reading them, 20, now it's 21. You open it, you see, oh, is this one I want to read? If you do read your text messages, if you got one unread, it's going to be the first thing you check. It's going to be before Facebook, before your mail, before anything else that you do. If you have a new text message, you're going to check that text message. Your second activity is your, your email. So that is the second activity that most people do when they wake up in the morning, is check their email. Your third activity, believe it or not, is Facebook. So you're checking Facebook for what? What are you checking Facebook for? <coughs> Come on, you all check Facebook. I know everyone in here checks Facebook. What are you checking? Check what? 
how popular your post was, did people like it, What's going on? you're depressed for the day if no one liked your post, <laughs> what's going on, what's going on with your friends, what's going on in the world, both world news, and local news, and personal news. That's why we're checking it. So your text messages, your email, and Facebook are the three biggest apps that are checked when people get up in the morning. 97% of Americans, which I would say is fair to say is the majority of Americans, <laughs> is going to send or receive one text message a day. So raise your hand if you've send, sent or received a text message already today. That's almost everyone in the room. Everyone in this room has sent or received a text message. Do what? Yeah, and even more. I mean, I've probably sent a hundred text messages this morning already. All to your wife? Huh? No, not to my wife. <laughs> I've sent her five or six this morning. So everyone's using text messages. I know there's a lot of other out there, such as Facebook Messenger. You've got Google. You got all different kinds of messaging apps that you have on your phone. But the most common form of communication that we have between us now is your text messaging app. Everyone in this room has the ability to send or receive text messages. Not everyone in here has the Facebook Messenger app installed. Not everyone in here has the Google Chat app installed. But everyone in here has the ability to send or receive a text message. 97% of us use it, which is pretty much everyone. I mean, unless you're living under a rock, you're sending or receiving text messages. 67, and I believe this is a little low. I think there's people out there, the stalkers, the guys who get on their wife's, their, their wife's account and they're browsing stuff, they refuse to like anything, but they're on there. So I think this is a little low because a lot, some people refuse to admit that they do it. But 67% of Americans actively use Facebook. Actively. That means throughout the day, you're constantly checking Facebook. I just want to see who in here has already checked Facebook today? The majority of the room. The majority of the room. This is not something we can ignore anymore. You cannot afford to ignore this anymore. This is where everyone's attention is. This is where their eyeballs are. A lot of dealers over the years have been, they've done it wrong or they had a vendor that told them, we're gonna set up a Facebook page for $500 and you're gonna sell 100 more cars. It's just not the case. You can't give up because this is where the eyeballs are. You can't say, well, it didn't work, so I'm just never, I'm not gonna do Facebook anymore. Does, ever, does any, ever, most people in here know Mike Davenport? He's one of the biggest Chevy salesmen in the country. <coughs> He sells a lot of cars on Facebook. What's his name? Mike Davenport. He works at uh, Bachman Chevrolet in Louisville, Kentucky. He's maxed out on his friends, but you can follow him. That's a prime example of using Facebook at a personal level. So he uses Facebook at a personal level. He posts about his life, and then he also posts about work. So this leaves you as a, as a dealer to think, how do I use Facebook for my business? Unfortunately, it's not free. I'm here to tell you, you will not be able to sell cars on Facebook at scale for free. You may be able to sell one or two here and there, but if you wanna sell an extra 30, 40, 50, 100 cars a month, it's not going to be free. You're going to have to take it seriously. Not a $500 investment, not a $1,000 investment, we're talking a large portion of your budget. From what I've seen right now, the average dealer is investing two to three percent of their budget on Facebook. That is nowhere near what you should be investing when 67 percent of people are actively using Facebook. The open rate of text messages, 98 percent of text messages are eventually opened because the notification will start to bug you. You know the person's no longer looking to see if you read it, 
and you got to go through and get rid of the notification. 45% of them are responded to. And that's because a lot of them don't require a response. You may not need to respond to the person. They're just saying, here's the address, and you show up at the address. Now let's compare this to mail, to email, which the majority of dealers use right now as their primary form of communication outside of the phone. Twenty of them are open, 20% of them are responded. That's all industries. I'm sure everyone in here has looked at their email report know that if you're trying to email people, it's usually not 20% of them that are opened. Got it? So your open rate on email is low, substantially lower than text message, and your response rate is low, substantially lower than text message. And that's getting worse. I say it all the time, email is dying. It is dying. It is no longer how people like to communicate. I use email for business. You send me any offer in my email, I unsubscribe from it automatically. Instantly, the second I receive it, because it's my to-do box, and it has only to do with business. I do not communicate with my friends, family, or anything outside of business through my email. It's all done through my text messaging or my Facebook page. This is a big one. 98% of text messages are read within three minutes of sending that text message. Why is that? Because we're so obsessed with our phone, the second the notification comes in, your phone's this far from your face, and you see the notification within three minutes. In an email, it's much more complex because you have to actually open the email app. You may get a couple, the first couple words in the email, but you have to actually open the email app, read the email. On a text message, you'll typically see the entire message within three minutes of someone sending you a text message. So now I want to And I have been in social marketing in the automotive space for a long time watching a lot of different vendors, watching a lot of different dealers, and the ads that I see are literally appalling. They are appalling. I see ads and thousands and thousands, and the reason I see it appalling is because it's just money flying out the window. Literally out the window. I see ads that have no call to action. Would you send an email without a call to action? Would you do any other form of advertising without a call to action? Without telling the customer, this is how you respond to this offer. Yet time and time again, I'll see an ad that says, the new Tundra, and that's it. And a picture of a Tundra. I've even seen ads with no link. It's just a picture, literally four or five words. And then we're sitting here wondering, why does our Facebook advertising not work? Why am I not selling anything? So this is the typical structure that we're seeing on Facebook ads. There's a couple things you need to do, and you're limited in space on this. You cannot write a book in this. You're limited on how much text you can put in this ad. So I'm gonna use my cool little, hopefully this thing works. So present the offer. The first thing I do up here, there's the offer. Drive a brand new, Jeep Patriot, and thank you, Chad, for letting us put your ad up here. That's a ridiculous price. If anyone, that is a brand new price. That is a real price. That is a ridiculous price. I mean, I don't know how much it costs to build a Jeep. <laughs> that ad went live yesterday, and 15 minutes with 18. I would, if I was in the market. <laughs> And, and I'll tell you why it's so cheap. Chrysler just came out with a new incentive for bad credit people. So you've got 2,500 in extra rebates right now for bad credit customers. Isn't that crazy? Bad credit, even if you don't? No, I think it's got to be a 620, 620 or lower. 
Yeah, a person, actually we finally got it right. The people who can pay the least have always paid the most. The people who can pay the most have always <laughs> turned it around now. People yet who pay the most are paying the most. <laughs> what they pay the most actually are getting a break for a change. It's <laughs> the shades of excitement. Someone finally figured it out. There. The only downside I see to this is we're advertising 11 8 25 and a good credit customer may want this, and they're going to come and you're gonna be, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you got to go not pay your mortgage for 60 days <laughs> and then we can give you the extra 2500 off yeah. I mean that's crazy to me I, I has anyone ever seen that? I mean I've been doing it a long time yeah, that's predatory lending that, practices that come into play based on credit score to give me a better discount. That's actually a, a Chrysler thing, so yeah. I mean, uh, that's all we but neither here nor there. No matter what the offer is, it could be 25% off, it could be whatever it is. You need to present the offer clearly and use as little text as possible. Do not write a book about your offer. You don't have the room and there's a couple of other things you need to include in the ad for it to be successful. The next one is your call to action. I want this Jeep Patriot for $11,825. I mean, I'm dumbfounded by the number of ads I see on Facebook and it isn't just the auto industry. That doesn't tell you what you want to do if you're interested in the ad. I mean, I'll give you my address if you just want to send me the money. Because it is absolutely a waste of money to not have a call to action in your ad. Which is why you have to keep your offers very limited. So call to action. In this case, it's click the learn more button. So down here, you got a learn more button. Very simple. What do I want them to do? Don't put five call to actions, just like Brian talks about with this call to actions on your website. Don't say, click to learn more, or click this link, or call us. One call to action, one clear call to action it needs to be in your ad. What do you want them to do? I want them on this ad, click the learn more button. So that's what I say, click the learn more button, not rocket science. Next one, added benefit. So added benefit here is text message. That's the added benefit that we use. We're not going to call you. We're not going to blow up your email with spam. Most people on Facebook do not want a phone call from you. I'm sorry, they don't. That's just not how they want to communicate with you. So our added benefit to this is we're going to text message back and forth the answers to the questions that you have. I'll go to the next slide here. Who's familiar with Facebook lead gen ads? Raise your hand if you've used or are familiar with Facebook lead gen ads. If you're not, you may want to write that down. Within the next five years, it's going to completely change the way that you advertise digitally. It's going to change your dealership. It's not just going to be Facebook. Twitter's jumping on board. And we're going to have many other social sites jump on board with this type of advertising. So what Facebook lead gen ad is, for those that are unfamiliar, this is a lead gen form. So right here, when I click this button right here, when I click this learn more button, oops, oh, sorry, this is a new clicker. I'm still getting used to it. So when I click this learn more button right here, the next thing I get looks like this. The reason this is going to change the way you're doing stuff, who's seen a drop in their form completion rates in the past five to 10 years? Who's seen a substantial drop in your form completion rates in the past five to 10 years. Substantial. This, I don't have to fill out. I don't have to go to another website. Your slow loading pages, don't have to worry about them. I don't have to worry about the customer navigating the 19 buttons that you have. And they pull your email, your cell phone, and your name right out of your Facebook profile. That easy. You just click the button, all your information's populated into the form. Would you agree that that's what we want now? That we don't want to fill out forms, we don't want to fill out lengthy forms to find out information about a certain offer? 
This is the solution. This right here is the solution to advertising on Facebook and selling cars at scale. This is going to make it where dealers will be spending 50 to 60% of their budget. Mark my words, within the next five years, dealers will be spending 50 to 60% of their budget on Facebook advertising. As long as Facebook keeps doing what they're doing to keep their audience engaged and on Facebook, you will be spending the majority of your budget on Facebook within the next five years because of these lead gen ads. What do you think the form completion rate is on this? What do you guys think the form completion rate is on this? Guess. At least double. 100%. 100% of the people that click this form go to the next screen. The next screen, this is where you will have a little bit of drop off. Why? Because it's a disclaimer. So you might be thinking, text message. Oh, everyone told me I can't text message people. I got to get forms signed. I'm going to get sued. You know why that is? You know why everyone has that perception of text message? Because we looked at it wrong. You started mass texting people. You started getting a list of 2,000 customers and blasting them. Then the government had to come in and say, oh, you can't do that. That's why this disclaimer has to be here. It's crazy to me to think that you don't have to have permission to call someone but you have to have permission to text. Do you need a disclaimer even if you submit to the lead? So on, we do have the disclaimer because everyone abused text messaging. Thank you guys for abusing text messaging. <laughs> so we abused text messaging. The government came in and said, now we have to have a disclaimer. So on the next screen, after they click the next button on that lead gen form, and it's hard to read, there's a clear opt-in to receiving. I'll send this to everyone so you don't have to squint. I, it'll actually be on the thumb drive that they give you. There's a clear opt-in to receiving texts. That's raising their hand and saying, yes, you can text me. Yes, sir? How do they opt out after they opt in? That's up to the software that you use to connect your Facebook ads to text messaging. That's completely on your end and whatever partner that you choose to help you with your texting solution. But you, uh, you do have to give them a way to opt out. Especially in Canada, because we got the MacGyver brothers here. They have really strict rules on text messaging. They, I mean, if you're worried about text messaging, go move to Canada. I mean, you gotta be, they were telling me they gotta opt in to get emails. You can't even email someone without them opting in. I mean, their rules are ridiculous. The next part here, use that for your offer disclaimer. So on this crazily priced, Patriot here. I mean, it's longer than what's there. There's like a book of disclaimer there. And that's where you're putting customers. Once the customer submits that, you must engage them. You may have used lead gen forms that were connected through maybe LeadBridge or something like that, and you were pushing it into your CRM. Number one, most CRM pushes have a five minute delay. Instantly, before you even see the lead, there's a five minute delay. Do you think the people on Facebook want to wait five minutes after they submit this? And then once the lead comes into your CRM, how long does it take people to respond to a lead in here? What's your average response time to a lead? Someone give me some numbers. 20 minutes? Don't be scared, 15 minutes? Anyone else? An hour and a half. Hour and a half? I mean, that's kind of realistic. I'm just saying, I've been in a lot of CRMs and there's four hours, four hours. I mean, let's get real with ourselves. It takes forever for a customer when they submit a form to get responded to. If you're not going to engage that customer, don't spend the money. These people that are coming off of Facebook want instant gratification. They do not want to They do not want to wait for the lead to make it to your CRM. They do not want to wait for your BDC rep or your salesperson to pick up the phone and call them. And they don't even want a phone call. 
You try and call the leads from these lead gen ads, you're going to get one out of 20 to pick up the phone. One out of 20. It's a waste of money. Can't do it that way. Will not work without connecting this with text message. That is the only way that I found it to work. If you can get the person to respond three times, get them to respond three times to a text message, your conversion rate three hundred and twenty eight percent they've committed to you you know they know you know they're there it's like when you do read that text message that you've been avoiding once you accidentally click it what happens what do you got to do you accidentally click the text message you know they saw you read it what do you got to do you have to reply it's very personal the way that we communicate over text message once you've got the person engaged back and forth with you, you can take this conversation wherever you want. You can take the conversation on for the next year, for the next two years, because they know you know they're there. And it's, a, it's rude to not respond to someone. So if you find someone that does text messaging with Facebook ads, you want to make sure that they've got a process in place that's going to make that's going to incentivize the customer to respond and has the right way to get the customer to respond because you will get a lot of ghosts if you over attack them i've seen dealers the first thing they do hi this is johnny i'm in the bd i work with abc ford i'd love to sell you a car and do all this great stuff and it's literally a book a book if the customer does not respond to you they're not obligated to you once you get them to respond three times, you've got a 328% better chance they're going to turn into a car deal. So it's very important that you pay attention to what you're sending these leads once they're generated off these Facebook ads. Don't do the long books. I mean, I cannot stress that anymore. Don't do the long books. You scare them away, they will not be obligated to you. You can do the book later, once the person's admitted they're there and you've got a little conversation going, you can send a longer text message, but don't do that initially. So what happens when you connect text, mes text messaging with Facebook? It's very simple. Facebook plus text message makes you happy and a ton of money. <laughs> New word. <coughs> shit ton. No, I think he's got shit ton in the thing. Uh, Is I'm not in there? Oh man, we gotta add that one. I, I cannot express any more from what I've seen. 10,000 leads last month off of Facebook. Purely off of Facebook last month. 10,000 leads with an 80% engagement rate. 80%. That's like 8 out of 10 of your leads picking up the phone and talking to you. It's going to change everything you have learned about digital marketing in the automotive space. End of story. I've seen every kind of lead. I've seen every type of digital lead. The way Facebook has done these lead gen ads and connecting them with a text message is going to change everything. It's going to change the game. So my name is Jason Gerdner. I uh, use Facebook, I don't use Twitter, I don't use Instagram, I don't use any of the Snapchats, I don't have a Snapchat picture on my profile. I simply use Facebook, and you can find me at jason.gerdner on Facebook. Uh, that's my cell phone number. If you have any questions, you need a, a sample ad, we're more than happy to help you. Do not call me, I won't answer your phone if I don't recognize the number, text me, please. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. If you text me, you'll get a response. If you call, I'm going to send you to voicemail. Do you listen to your voicemails? I do not listen to my voicemails. <laughs> so I want to open it up for questions. We do have a little bit of time. So does anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. So um, a CRM that I used to work with that was really, really old school, higher gear. I don't know if anybody... I'm heard. familiar with it. Oh, yeah. um, they actually we, have a, we have a PC sitting around the office just so we can get on higher gear. Like literally for higher gear. It has gear. to be like an old school one, yeah. Um, but it actually limited the text message characters to like 250 or something like that. 
Would you suggest some, like, maybe having some kind of restriction on how many characters can be sent? I think initially you don't want to overwhelm them with text, uh, but as you've built a relationship with someone, you can send a longer one. I mean, you don't want to write a book, and that's not necessarily because it breaks up the text message. That's just because you'll be that overly, you know, talkative person that's, you know, no one wants to read a book. Everyone in here has probably got an employee that sent you a book just to say, hey, I'm making it in late today, and you got to read a book. <coughs> yes, sir. So, Facebook separated Messenger and created the Messenger app office. Yes, sir. Does this product or does this the lead gen forms on Facebook uh, allow you to use a messenger application? No, and there's a couple reasons I've stuck I've stayed away from Messenger. Now, the first one and the biggest one is data capture. You do not get data capture with Messenger ads. That is the biggest one. I'm a big data person. With the lead gen forms, you're going to get cell phone and email, and that's your data you now own and you can continue to use in the future. So that's the number one reason why I've stayed away from Messenger. And I can develop into the Messenger API. I stay away from it. The second one, probably the biggest reason I stay away from it, not the biggest reason why I don't use it, is once you've generated those leads through Facebook, they now control if you're able to use to message those customers. So you tell me if you want to spend 10 grand a month for the next six months and then wake up one day and Facebook says, oh, you can't message people that are more than a month old, which is going to happen because what's going to happen? Everyone's going to generate all these leads, and then they're going to spam the hell out of them on Messenger, and then Facebook's going to say, no, we don't want you spamming people. So that's number two. The third one is the ability to manage them at scale. We're not talking one or two leads here. We're not talking, I have one person, they're going to manage all these leads. There's dealers, just ask Chad, or let's ask the MacGyvers, how many leads did you get last month? From Jacoby. From Facebook, lead gen ads. Yeah, a little over 300. A little over 300 leads. So now you try, imagine communicating with 300 people and organizing that on Messenger. Who's got what lead, where it's going? Yes, sir. The reason why I ask is because most of the chat services that, that are out now, you know, contact and for now, you can connect Messenger to your chat. Yeah, they've solved the problem. If you have one of those, they've kind of solved the problem with the organizing them and the organization of the, the managing them, but they have not solved the data capture and they have not solved that they're using the API to communicate with that customer. And Facebook controls that API. I'm going to tell you right now, when I built my gaming app, and I started getting thousands of people to Facebook pages. Oh, yeah, we won the lottery. Woke up one day. Guess what? Changed it all. Changed it all. My whole life changed. I was like, holy shit. What do I do now? What do I do now? My whole life changed. No longer could pull the data like I had. No longer could send the game notifications to other people's pages. Went from driving 500 to 600 people to a dealer's page in a day to 10, 20. So when you rely on Facebook's API, you're going to rely on them making the right decisions for your business. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not trusting Facebook with my business. And done it, not doing it again. Someone raise their hand. Someone yeah. I think it's important that you explain your text ninjas and how you do the heavy lifting first. Yeah, so that we do have, and I don't want to get into a sales pitch, but I'll talk about what you should be prepared for if you're going to do this. It's a large volume of text messages. So the biggest difference I can explain about text message versus chat or the phone is you know when the chat's done, you know when you're done on the phone. Why? You're done. Because they hung up the phone or they got off the website and you, you're done. On a text message, how long can they drag out? How long can a text message conversation drag on for? Forever. Days. Forever. Days. Months. We learned, me and Scarlett, because she runs the office, that's my wife, we learned the hard way. Literally, bleeding fingers. Learn the hard way. You send a picture of a truck. Guy gets it. He's in the bathroom. He reads it, doesn't want to respond, or he's in his boss's office, doesn't want to respond. What do you got to do? Doesn't mean he's not interested. He just didn't respond and he forgot about it. What do you got to do? Now you got to remember, 
a day later to come back and respond. And hey, did you get that that truck? Now you thousands of leads. What do you end up with? A huge problem. So we have found we have used artificial intelligence combined with human interaction to offset that workload. This is not something that a typical BDC and the procedures that they're using right now are going to be able to do. You can try, and I'm telling you, they're going to hate you, but it's not something that a typical BDC and the procedures that they use right now are going to be able to handle. So we, have, we actually have text ninjas across the country. We call them text ninjas, but um, they're BDC people that we've recruited from dealerships that have been in the automotive business, that understand the car business, and we've combined them with artificial intelligence that I'm personally building to manage this type of communication with people. It's a much different communication than a chat or a phone call. It's very, very different. Yeah, I'll just vouch to that point whoever mentioned part with the managed chat. We use Govagoo, and Govagoo has managed chat for Messenger. Uh, Jason's team has car people, so the, it's just a different, completely different experience of the people that are setting the the appointments through Jacoby rather than you know that simple lead that you're getting through Gabagoo or whoever's handling it. And literally, I mean, they're they're literally just sending customers. They're walking in, get ready to buy or sell their cards. It's completely different than any chat service we've ever used. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> questions we do have a little time I spent a lot of money on Facebook ads so if you got go ahead it's gonna vary per store I mean that's such a loaded question I mean I, I would say 8 to 12 percent would be in there but don't be surprised if some stores close 2 percent and some close 15 or 20 percent really depends on the store I mean, I've seen stores where everyone in the dealership's doing cocaine all day. They're not going to close very many deals. <laughs> and they'll, they do have lots of fun. <laughs> At which point do you actually hand it off to the dealership? Uh, so what we do is we have a setting for a certain amount of time. If we can't get an appointment in a certain amount of time, then we push it to the dealership for a phone call. Which I didn't put this in the slide deck, but I should have. The one thing I will tell you is it generates people all over the world. So right now, everyone in here is competing against everyone else in here for those low funnel in market shoppers. That's all you have in the digital world right now. Out display advertising, which display advertising just sucks because of the bots and the intrusiveness of those ads. The only thing you have right now are low funnel in market shoppers. You're all bidding for them. You're all pitching your price and it's destroying our industry. It is absolutely destroying our industry. I have salespeople in dealerships that I would never consider a salesperson. They are an absolute order taker. Yes, sir. So as far as the, the range, the Mr. Ads on the Jeep range, what, in your experience, what do you think is a good soft spot? You, you want to have more than 200,000 people in your audience. Okay. So as long as you're not stretching too far, if you have 2 million people in that 20 miles, then do 2 million people. Just don't try not to go below 200,000 people. What's That's the, what I found. What's the average cost that you found on uh, form submission ads? So we see leads range anywhere from $5 on the low end, it's pretty good, to 35 on the high end. We actually have a hard of $35. If a lead goes over $35, we're calling to rework the ads and change the offer. And I'll go into a little bit about the, the range. The biggest variable in the range is the type of ad. Most consumers care more about their trade value right now. Consumer interest has shifted from price-oriented customers to what am I going to get for my trade. They know They've, done, they've already bought cars since every dealer has dropped their pants and put all their lowest prices on them. So they've already bought one or two cars since that happened. They know if they go to dealer A, B, or C, there's a couple hundred dollar difference. So it's interest and they're more concerned about what am I going to get for my trade. So the buybacks saying, hey, I want to buy your used car. I'm willing to pay more than the guy down the road has the lowest lead cost. You can generate those leads. I think when they started, they were coming in at $3 a lead. 
but we see them from five to eight dollars. The next one up is going to be your credit ads. They're going to be eight to twelve bad credit customers. Hey, we can get you finance. Bad credit customers. The next one up is going to be your used car ads, twelve to twenty, depending on the used car and the, the quality of the used car. And then your new cars are going to run fifteen to thirty-five. That's going to be your lease specials, your your uh, loss letters, things like that are going to run anywhere from 15 to 35. We have a hard limit at 35. If they go over 35, I feel that we're getting too close to a Google AdWords campaign. and I, would, I just want to blow them out of the water. So what would be the recommended budget? Uh, recommended budget, I mean, I'm just going to shoot you guys straight. Everyone likes to say they're selling cars for $300 a month or $300 a unit. It's not true. If you take the number of cars you sell and stop advertising, how many cars will you sell? If you just completely stopped advertising, how much would you sell off a repeat and referral business? Then you take the additional and you divide that by your budget. So mo the NADA average is six, $600 per new car sold. Everyone likes to think that they're selling them for 300, it's just not the case. So you gotta back into that math. How many cars do you wanna sell? Be, ra be reasonable with yourself on how much you, you're spending per incremental deal, because this is incremental business. This is, not, this, this is not a chat widget or a form pop-up that's trying to steal uh, the credit for traffic you're driving to the site. This is incremental business. This is new people you're reaching out to, you're pushing into the market. So the budget, very simple. How many more cars do you want to sell? This is going to be more effective than anything else, but it's not free. So don't do your math at $150 or $200. You're lying to yourself. You're going to set false expectations. I would say do it at about 25% less than what you believe your real number is per call. Because you're going to get about a 25% better from Facebook just because they have the eyeballs. And your competition isn't here. Not saying that eventually I'm going to have all your competition here, but right now, your competition is not on Facebook, so you're going to get a result. So you got to back into the numbers. If you want to sell, I've got, I'll tell you right now, I've got dealers spending 20 grand plus per month on Facebook. On Facebook, purely Facebook. I don't touch anything under five grand. You're not willing to spend five grand, I won't touch it. So we're, we're spending about a thousand for Facebook per dealership, so you're talking about nine grand. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch a rooftop under five. It's just not worth the time and energy for what you're ultimately going to get out of it. You can get a bunch of clicks to your website. I'm not saying you can't get a bunch of clicks to your website for a grand, but if you want to actually generate leads and convert those into car deals, you got to spend money. That means start looking at your AdWords budget, start looking at your trader budget, start looking at your cars budget, start looking at all those budgets and saying, do I want to really compete against all my competition on these leads or do I want to drive new leads that I'm the only one working? We started with, uh, with one store and uh, first week uh, we cut a whole bunch of stuff and added every other store on it. And it's, it's the number one lead source for our own group. Yeah, I, I, hopefully Chad gets up there next month. I think we might get a quite a substantial bit more out of Chad next month. Uh, so does there, if everyone knows Bill Bosch Automotive Group, he's going to be my first service client. Uh, this works with anything. I, so when I first came out with this product, and I don't know if we're going over, when I first came out with this product, I was sitting, got the first lead. I'm like, this is a real person. And I'm texting him. And I'm at home, working at home at this time. Next lead comes over two minutes later. I'm like, holy, that's another person. Next lead, next lead, next lead, and I'm calling Scott. Say, hey, honey, you got to come help me with these leads. <laughs> and the first thing I thought when I laid down that night, holy shit, what can I sell with this? I don't have a car dealership. I'm like, I can't. I need to find something I can sell. I started a detail business. It's a mobile detail business. Within the first month, we covered all of our operating expenses purely off of these leads. So it'll work. To answer your question, it'll work with anything that you do service, sales, but I got to wrap it up. So I appreciate everyone's time. If you have any questions, our brochure, our brochure is back there.
Um, so you can pick it up off the chair if you want and then reach out to me. That's my cell phone number. Good job,